Coming up on today's episode of Airborne, a fatal accident occurred during a young eagle flight. The NAA finally recognizes Bob Hoover's achievements. And the Civil Air Patrol cadets launch a paper plane to near space. Welcome to Airborne on Aero TV. I'm Ashley Hale. We're sad to report that a young eagle flight went down on Saturday morning with the loss of two lives. An in-flight collision occurred six miles east-southeast of the Buffalo-Lancaster, New York Regional Airport at approximately 10.40 a.m. local time. The accident involved a Cessna 172 Skyhawk and a progressive Aerodyne Sea Ray, which is an amateur-built experimental aircraft. The Cessna was flown by a male pilot and carried a single young male as a passenger. Both perished in the accident. The Sea Ray piloted by an adult male and carrying a young female apparently affected a safe emergency landing and both occupants are described as having non-life-threatening injuries. The NTSB will investigate the accident and we at AM will keep you posted as we gain more accurate information. And now for some good news. Robert L. Bob Hoover will receive the 2014 Wright Brothers Memorial Trophy from the National Aeronautic Association. The trophy is awarded annually to a living American for, quote, significant public service of enduring value to aviation in the United States, end quote. One of the most important, historic, and visible aviation and aerospace awards in the world, the Wright Brothers Memorial Trophy reflects a timeline of aviation and aerospace's most innovative inventors, explorers, industrialists, and public servants. Jim Alboff, NAA chairman and member of the Scientific Committee, heralded the choice by saying, quote, There are very few people in the world that capture the history, progress, importance, and sheer excitement of aviation and aerospace like Bob Hoover. For 70 years, he has set the standard for skill, leadership, and bravery, which may last forever, end quote. Hoover is a friend of ANN and of our editor-in-chief, Jim Campbell, who authored the book, Air of Injustice, which describes Hoover's battle with vindictive FAA actions brought against him. Hoover prevailed, and we at ANN are delighted to see him honored with this award. And may we add, it's about time. After these messages, we'll learn that a paper plane can reach the edge of space. You're watching Airborne. Rainbird Flight Simulations is dedicated to revolutionizing flight training by designing, manufacturing, and delivering affordable and innovative flight training technologies. Each Redbird device is designed to enhance the training experience for pilots of all levels, from student to ATP. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Welcome back. If you'd like to suggest a story for Airborne, Aero TV, our website, or our podcast, drop an email to news fi at aero news.net. A paper airplane made it to near space and back, but this paper plane was more high tech than even some full size planes. The Fox Valley Composite Squadron, which was the local unit of the Illinois wing of the Civil Air Patrol, beat the Guinness World Record of highest paper airplane flight from a high-altitude balloon. The paper airplane was launched from Kankakee, Illinois, suspended below a gas-filled balloon, and achieved an altitude of 96,563 feet, which is 18.3 miles into the stratosphere. It then landed safely 82 miles away, southwest of Rochester, Indiana. The squadron cadets completely designed and constructed the traditional-looking paper airplane, made of sturdy paperboard. It measured 30 inches in length with a 4.5 inch wingspan and weighed a total of 1 pound. The paper airplane was also outfitted with a GPS tracking system, temperature sensors, barometric pressure sensor, flight computer, batteries, solar panel, and HD video camera to record the entire historic flight. Each week, we share with you a sample of an online video one of our viewers found especially entertaining. We call it our Aero Video of the Week. Final lift off and left. 
It can be a lot of fun to stand at the end of a runway and watch the airplanes land. In this video, you'll see that it can also part your hair and curl your toes. Search Turkish F-16 extremely low on YouTube. The FAA has granted regulatory exemptions to six aerial photo and video production companies, the first step to allowing the film and television industry the use of unmanned aircraft systems in the national airspace system. Secretary Fox made the announcement on a conference call with FAA Administrator Michael Huerta and Chris Dodd, Chairman and Chief Executive Officer of the Motion Pictures Association of America. Secretary Fox also determined that the UAS vehicles to be used in the proposed operations do not need an FAA-issued certificate of airworthiness based on the finding that they do not pose a threat to national airspace users or national security. Those findings are permitted under Section 333 of the FAA Modernization and Reform Act of 2012. While it's sometimes hard to take Hollywood seriously, especially when it comes to aviation, this authorization by the FAA is a significant step forward for the commercial use of UAS vehicles. It looks like a UAS film feature may be coming soon to a theater near you. After the break, we learn why a famous aerobatic pilot had no choice but to bail out. Stay tuned. ADS-B will be mandatory for most aircraft by 2020 in the United States, but you can benefit from ADS-B today with the Bendix King KT-74 Mode S Transponder. The KT-74 meets the global mandates for ADS-B out when attached to a suitable WASP GPS. Finally, the extraordinary story of the world-changing XPRIZE space competition is being told and illustrated with hundreds of insider photos in Jim Campbell's colorful new book, Beyond the Blue. Journey with Jim as he flies formation with spaceships, plays in zero gravity, prepares rocket racers, and documents the amazing first decade of the personal space race. Available this summer. Get your advance order in now by checking out www.kindredspirit.com. Welcome back. Lithuanian aerobatic pilot Jurgis Karas found himself in an untenable position during a flight from Kavala to Athens earlier this week. His Su-26 airplane suffered an engine failure over the Aegean Sea, and Karas determined that his best chance for survival was to bail out of the plane. Rescue helicopters located the pilot after he had been in the water about three hours. Karras said the rescue aircraft flew over him twice before finally spotting him in the water. He had secured a floating piece of the wreckage of the airplane while he waited for help. Aviation professionals are invited to attend the 18th annual Bombardier Safety Standdown USA. This year's activities focus on reducing distraction through the use of proven attention control techniques. The conference will be held at the Hyatt Regency Wichita Hotel in Kansas on October 6th through the 9th. The seminars selected for the 18th edition of the Safety Standdown USA include a presentation on fatigue in aviation, a discussion on runway incursions and excursions, and a workshop on aircraft upset events and recovery training. Also part of the lineup are hands-on workshops providing safety training on aircraft evacuation procedures, live firefighting, and hypoxia awareness. A highlight of Safety Standdown USA will be the presentation of the third annual Eugene Cernan Safety Award to an outstanding aviation professional and Safety Standdown alumni who has gone above and beyond professional expectations. The NVP, which stands for Most Versatile Plane, was unveiled as a promising mock-up model at EAA AirVenture 2014. The new LSA amphibious airplane was shown with unique features that included an external hammock and a four-deck design that can accommodate camping gear or be converted into a fishing platform. Now the airplane mock-up is set to begin a world tour that will take it as far as China in November for Airshow China. The tour will begin in Minneapolis, Minnesota and will proceed from there to Washington State for a series of appearances. After the trip to China, the MVP mock-up will return to the States for three events in Florida, including the Sebring Sport Aviation Expo in January of 2015. 
Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember, Airborne is streamed three times a week and is always online. Join us for a new episode every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And remember, Airborne will be going to a daily schedule, that's Monday through Friday, early next year. And plus, we have much, much more upgrades in store. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.